Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in America, domestic violence is the leading cause of injury for women. More than car accident, mugging, and rapes combined. More than all of them together. And there was a statistic published that says that every three seconds, one woman is subjected to domestic violence. Every three seconds. That's more than 10 million women are subjected to domestic violence in the United States every year. More than 10 million. And the FBI published a report that says four women die every day from domestic violence. That's more than 1,400 women are killed every year from domestic violence. And researchers, they found a direct relationship between child abuse and domestic violence. 60% of children who are subjected to child abuse grew up in a house where there is domestic violence, 60%. Domestic violence can be physical, emotional, can be verbal, and can be financial. Domestic violence has no relationship to race, religion, economic status. Rich, poor, doesn't matter. So the question, are there violent Muslims? Is there Muslim that commit domestic violence? The answer is yes. As I said before, it doesn't have any distinction between religion. Yes. But why we hear about it a lot in the media? We hear about it a lot in the media because the media focus on the negative aspect of Muslims. So when you hear about a non-Muslim committing domestic violence against their wife, they say, a husband beat his wife. But when it's a Muslim, they say, a Muslim husband beat his wife. So it's specific. So how does Islam deal with domestic violence? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed Islam to us, everything that was wrong with society, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attacked it head on. It's not, you know, he went around it, talk about it nicely. No, head on. So when Islam came, people at the time, they were worshipping idols. Islam attacked it head on. When Islam came, people at the time, it was common practice that they kill their baby daughters. Not the boys, the girls, they killed them. Islam attacked it head on. When Islam came, it was very common that if you're rich or powerful, and you commit a crime, you're not punished. If you're poor, you're punished. Islam attacked it head on. There is nothing called inequality. Everybody's equal. So the only way to address domestic violence in our Muslim society is to attack it head on. First, let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting from us in a marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا And among his signs is that he created for you spouses from among yourselves that you may find rest, tranquility with them. And he has put unconditional love and mercy between your hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's describing husband and wife and it doesn't matter if it's the husband or the wife they call them zawj. Same word. Zawj means in Arabic pair of the same kind. That's what it means. So he's calling husband and wife as wajan. Pair of the same kind. Same thing when we say pair of jeans. It doesn't mean that's two different things. Right leg is same like left leg. They're identical. Pair of glasses, pair of scissors. While men and women are considered equal in God's sight, they have different abilities and strength. And therefore, they have different roles to play. But they complement each other. They are a pair. One without the other is incomplete. And if you notice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, 
what is the purpose of the relationship between husband and wife? Is to find rest and tranquility. For the husband to find rest and tranquility with his wife, and the wife to find rest and tranquility with her husband. And then he said, he put in our heart love and mercy. So when we have anger and violence, this is not from Allah. This is from shaitan and from us. So our heart as a husband and wife should be filled with love and mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ ثُمَّ جَعْلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا He created you from one soul, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Then he made from it its mate, its pair. Sayyida Hawa, Eve. So when some people say that women are second class, it's ridiculous because women are created from a man. So if women are second class, then men are second class. And if men are first class, then women are first class. It cannot be two created from the same source. One is different than the other. They are identical. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ and the believing men and the believing women are supporters, friend, protectors of one another. Not making each other suffer. No, we protect each other. And Allah says, Men are the protectors and maintainers of women. Not the abusers. They are the protector. They are the one who defend them from abuse. Make sure that nobody touch them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The best among you is the best toward his wife, and I am the best of you to my wives. He didn't say the good Muslim, he said the best. So if you want to be the best, then you have to be good to your spouse. That's it. Whether you are a man or a woman, you have to be good to your spouse, then you are the best. Not average, no. To be the best, you have to be good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ, كرهت فإن كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And live with them in kindness. That if you dislike them, it may be that you dislike a thing while Allah has placed abundant good in it. So Allah is saying, live with your spouse in kindness. Whether you love them or you don't love them. Because he started by saying, live with them in kindness. Then he's saying, maybe you don't like them. Don't rush into making a decision. Oh, I don't like her, so I'm going to divorce her. Or I don't like him, I want to divorce him. No. You may not know. Maybe that person you don't like, there is a lot of good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send to you through that person. So Allah is telling us, live with your spouse in kindness. Doesn't matter. You love them or you don't love them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّاتِ تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ وَضْرِبُوهُنَّ فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا as, for, as, as to those women on whose part you fear, there is two explanations for the word نُشُوزَهُن. Some people saying that the women start to look down on her, her husband that looks down on him, treat him like you're lower than me. And some other scholar described that the word by saying they engage in immoral behavior, infidelity. So for those women on whose part you fear ill conduct, they're rebellious, advise them kindly and refuse to share their beds and idrubuhunna, and we'll get to that word. But if they obey you, seek not against them means of annoyance, Surely Allah is most high, most great. What Allah is saying, if there is a problem with your spouse, and they're creating a problem, either they're looking down on you, or they're, you know, they have a bad conduct, then he's saying there are three steps, and it has to be in that order. You cannot jump to the last one or the first one. The first one is say, number one, appeal to her reason. Talk to her. Tell her, you know, this is not right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this is wrong. This is not what Allah ordered us to do. Allah told us to do this and this and that. So you appeal to her reason, number one. If it doesn't work, and you have to give it time, 
If it doesn't work, you go to step two. Step two, sleeping in separate bed. So you don't share the bed with your spouse. You sleep in separate beds. If it doesn't work, then you move to step three. And step three is the problem. And step three, the majority of the people who interpreted the Quran described it as hit your wife. And some of them tried to make it sound a little bit less violent. So they said, hit it lightly, hit her lightly. And some said, tap her. And this verse in the Quran is the verse that people who hate Islam, the non-Muslim, are using that verse to attack Muslim and say, Islam is a religion that encourages violence and abuse. That verse. That's what they're saying. So now, let's try to understand that word. Let's see, what does it mean? When try, whenever you try to understand something in the Quran, the two main methods to interpret the Quran is number one, to interpret the Quran with the Quran. What does it mean? You look at other places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used that same word and see what does it mean. So now you understand what does it mean this word. The second method of interpreting the Quran is to look at the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, What did he do? What did he say? Those are the main two sources of interpreting the Quran. So now let's take the word Udrubuhunna. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word Daraba 58 times, that word, 58 times. 30 times of those, he used them to say, give an example. Something similar. Allah says, Daraba, Daraba Allahu Mathala. Allah sets forth an example. So that's one interpretation for the word Daraba. A second one, he used it to mean travel. So he said, Darabtum fil ard, travel in the land. Another interpretation to fight. Darabtum fi sabilillah, fought for the sake of Allah. Another interpretation to hit. Fadarba riqab, then hit the necks. Another interpretation he used, another uh, meaning he used Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to separate. فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِصُورِ Then there will separate them a wall. Another use that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used for daraba, cover. فَضَرَبْنَ عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ We covered up their ears. So there is many, many, many meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used that word for. Many meanings. And then we look in the Quran in chapter 24. There is Surah An-Nur, chapter of the light. And in that Surah, Allah is talking about adultery. So in that Surah, Allah is saying, if a husband finds his wife committing adultery, and there is no four witnesses to come and say, oh, we saw it. It has to be four witnesses. You don't have four witnesses. The husband just walked in, he saw his wife committing adultery. So what does he do? Nowhere in the Quran said, he takes his gun and shoot her. Or he beat her up. No. What the Quran said, he take his wife and they go to either the ruler or the judge. And they both stand in front of the judge. And the man will testify, he's going to swear four times that he is telling the truth. And he will swear a fifth time that may the curse of Allah be upon him if he's a liar. And what will offset his testimony is his wife standing in front of the same judge and swearing by Allah four times that he is a liar. And the fifth time that may the anger of Allah be upon her if she's a liar. At that point, nothing happens. Nothing. The two testimony offset each other. The only thing the judge does is say, there is a divorce and you never can get back together ever. It's over. That's the only thing that happens. Separate them 
no, no return to each other. Even we know the story of the Prophet والسلام, and his wife as Sayyida Aisha, and it's written in the Quran. She was accused of adultery, slander, the, the, the incident of the slander by some members of the community. They came up with some words that, ah, she's, you know, she was doing something wrong and bad words about the wife of the Prophet The Prophet never raised his hand on his wife. Never did. Even his voice, he never raised it against her. Just imagine somebody accusing your wife of something evil like that. And he didn't touch her and he didn't raise his voice. As a matter of fact, at her request, she asked, can I go and stay with my father? And he gave her permission. And she stayed with her father for almost a month until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran to establish her innocence. For almost a month, we don't see any physical violence, nothing, not touching his wife. Islam ordered us to regulate and control our anger. And the verse that I mentioned about advisor, don't sleep with her. And then the one that says, tap her or whatever, is a verse to teach us to control our anger. Because if you're going to advise, then you're not going to be angry. If you're going to sleep apart, then you're controlling your anger. There is no chance of friction. So what does this third word, I believe, means? I personally believe that step three, the third word, Adribuhunna, means to separate. Separate from them. To distance from them. So why do I say that? I have to have some logic. You cannot just say this is what I think because I think it's cool. No. There is logic behind it. Number one, people who interpreted the Quran are influenced by the environment they are living in. They're influenced by that. And we're talking about some of the major scholars like al qurtubi Ibn Kathir, Al-Tabari. All of them lived around a thousand years ago. And if you go a thousand years ago and ask somebody, if somebody has a toothache, what should he do? They're going to say, pull the tooth. But if you ask somebody today in the last 50 years, somebody has a, a toothache, what should you do? Oh yeah, you go to the doctor, he's going to drill it, he's going to fill it, and you'll be fine. The difference is the environment that you're, 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 you lived in. Those people, all they know, pull the tooth. Today we know, you can fix the tooth. Same thing, at the time of those scholars, it was very common for men to beat their wives. It was not looked at it as violent or wrong. It was looked at as some, eh, normal, that's our culture. Number two, as Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, she was asked, what was the character of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? Tell us how he was behaving. So she said, his character was the Quran. Whatever is in the Quran, that's his character. So the Quran ordered us that we can, we have the right to divorce. It's not recommended, but we have the right to divorce. The Prophet ﷺ divorced. The Quran told us that we can shorten prayer. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was traveling, he shortened prayer. So everything in the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ did. We don't see anywhere that the Prophet ﷺ beat any of his wives, even though if it's, that's in the Quran. Number three, as Sayyida Aisha and many of the companions, they said, God's messenger never beat anyone with his hand, neither a woman nor a servant, but only when fighting in the cause of Allah in battle. He never beat any, any woman and in some other hadith say, or a child. So he never beat a woman, a child, or a servant. The only time he beat somebody is in the battle. That's the only time. Number four, there is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, the coalition. And in verses 28 and 29, 
the, it described the Prophet ﷺ had some serious marital problem with his spouses, his wives. What happened? Muslim condition started to get better after they moved to Medina. And Muslims started, you know, they won battles and they gained a lot of things. They became a little bit richer. But the Prophet ﷺ, what he used to do, his share of all the booties, all the rewards that he was getting from battles, all of that, he takes his share and gives it to the poor. Not spend it on his family. So his wives kept to pressuring him, we want more money, we want more allowance, we want to spend more. And they ganged up on him. And he wanted to live his modest life. He felt that whatever money comes to him, the poor deserve it more than him. So what did he do? He had a choice. He could have taken one of his wife, beat her up, the rest are gonna, I'm not going to say anything anymore. It's over. But no, he moved out of the homes of his wives and stayed somewhere else, separated from them for almost a month. He didn't resort to any violence or anything. He moved out and stayed out for almost a month until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed those two verses. And in those two verses, Allah is giving the choice to his wives. Either you accept to live, him, to live with him a modest life and in his modest condition or he can divorce you it's up to you and they all said no we'll live the modest life we would rather stay with him but no violence he didn't commit any violence against them number five Islam condemns domestic violence once a number of women came to the Prophet ﷺ to complain that their husband had beaten them the Prophet announced that men who beat their wives are not good men. And the Prophet ﷺ another time he said, Do not beat the female servants of Allah. So don't beat your wives. And number six, the next verse after the verse that's, that some people interpret as hitting, the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبْعَثُوا حَكَّمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَّمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقُ اللَّهَ بَيْنَهُمَا And if you fear a breach between the two, husband and wife, then appoint a judge from his family and a judge from her family. If they both desire peace agreement, Allah will affect harmony between them. If you think about it, if the husband can beat his wife, what there will be another meeting to try to bring them together. Look at the circus. The trainer takes a lion and keep beating him up until at the end he tells him, roll over, he rolls over. Sits on your back legs, he sits on his back legs. Nothing. So if there is beating, why there is reconciliation? When they take somebody and torture them in prisons and stuff like that, they confess to any crime. Confess to a crime in China, I'll confess to China. Confess to Africa, I'll confess to Africa. Whatever you want. So if that's the case, and there is beating, why there need to be two people trying to reconcile and bring them together? Number seven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ سَرِّحُهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ Then retain them in kindness, or release them, release them in kindness. Allah is saying whether they, you stay with them, they, they stay with you, or you divorce them. Either way, you have to be kind to your spouse. Divorce, that's the time, I don't want to see you anymore. No, you have to be still kind. You cannot be violent, you cannot be rude, you cannot commit any harm. Number eight, the famous four Khalifas that came after the Prophet ﷺ. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali. We all know, or we know the detail of their lives. It's written in all books. None of them has been stated that they beat their wives. Not a single one of them. Nothing. As a matter of fact, Sayyidina Umar, when he was the ruler of the Muslims, a man was at his home and his wife was giving him a hard time, telling him bad words, yelling at him and all of that. He said, he didn't beat his wife. He said, I'm going to go and ask Sayyidina Umar, what should I do? At night, he took off and went to Sayyidina Umar. He went to his house. Ready on, to knock on the door, he heard the wife of Sayyidina Umar screaming at him, shouting at him, using bad words at him. 
So the man, when he heard that, he said, no, 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 no. He turned around, and on his way to walking back, Sayyid Omar came out. He said, what were you doing here? You came to, see, to ask me for something. He said, yeah, you know, I had a problem with my wife, but when I heard your wife, what she was doing, I was just going back, you know, I said, I'm, I'm fine. So Sayyidina Omar said to him, Sayyidina Omar said to him, she prepares food for me, washes my clothes, and raises my children, though she does not have to do any of these things, then should I not tolerate her behavior? Sayyidina Omar, and we know Sayyidina Omar, if anybody is going to beat somebody, ideal one would be Sayyidina Omar. He didn't touch her. Number, the last thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, domestic violence is a problem in some Muslim homes, but we do not talk about it for many reasons. Religion is never a cause for domestic violence. Some Muslim men try to justify their abuse by blaming Islam, but the truth is that the motive for their abuse is not and can never be religion. It is their inability to control their anger and their unwillingness to obey Allah in treating the women in their lives with love and kindness. A family is like a bird and every bird needs two wings. The wings of the family is the husband and the wife. And if the wing of the wife is broken or damaged, the family will not survive. Domestic violence is not acceptable in any home and in particular Muslim homes. Domestic violence is a learned behavior. You learn it from your parents. And they found from research that children who grow up in a house where there is domestic violence, they are three times more likely to commit domestic violence when they grow up. And there is more likelihood to have mental and psychological problems and use drugs because of domestic violence. So we must stop the circle in violence in our homes. Islam orders a husband to be kind and gentle with his wife. And order a wife to be kind and gentle with her husband. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. And never forget that he will ask us about that on the day of judgment.